In this chapter, we will learn how to use Keyshot's Curvature Texture Node as an alternate method for mixing between our dirt and metal materials procedurally without the need for UVW mapping. Additionally, we will learn how to duplicate a camera and lock it for comparative rendering. So here we are back in our file. I've rotated our environment light so that it is on the uh, other side of our amulet where the Japanese crest is. And this would be a good way for me to demonstrate our curvature mapping. Now, before I do this, I want to show you guys uh, something pretty cool that you can do with the cameras. So underneath the camera panel over here, by default, we have the uh, free camera, which is the one that you're just using all the time and rotating with. What I want you to do is come over here and you just click this plus sign, add a new camera and find a positioning that you like for where you want to be able to render and do comparisons. And then over here, maybe just give it a quick name, um, cam lock, and then over here where you see the little padlock, just click that and now it's locked. So now if you try and rotate, you can't, and then this is rendering. So this will be nice for us to come back to later and use for comparison renders. So let's go back to our free camera, which we can move around as so. And I'm gonna open up our material editor again, or sorry, our material graph. And it's taken up a lot of space, but this will still allow us to see what's going on here on the side. So I'm just gonna pull that over a little bit. And once again, we're using the material we've been creating for a while, the metal amulet. So what I want to show you guys now is uh, an alternate method to do the mixing between our dirt and our metal underneath. As you remember, previously we used our um, map that we extracted from ZBrush for our dirt to transition between those. But for those of you that don't have time to do UV maps or a lot of conceptual artists out here, I'm going to show you how to use curvature mapping, which is a really, really powerful procedural tool for mixing between different shaders. So you just come in here anywhere, right click, materials, actually, sorry, textures. And up here, you can just see it at the bottom of the screen, curvature, click that. And what this does is this, this gives you basically a, a curvature node. For those of you that are familiar with using a lot of different programs like V-Ray and Redshift, this is something that uh, you can use in there as well. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to quickly demonstrate what this looks like on our piece. I'm going to move this over just a little bit. If you remember, we're going to press C. Now you can see this on our amulet. Right now it has uh, these kind of funky pink and blue colors. You'll notice on our material graph over here, negative curvature and positive curvature is represented by those. So all we want to do is go in here and switch these to white and black. You can pick whichever one you want. I'm going to put the negative curvature to white and the positive curvature to black. And we're not even going to mess with the zero curvature. In a minute, we'll play with the cutoff and the radius to get some different settings. So what you can see now is it's doing almost kind of like a mask on the fly. So I'll click our original mask that we created. And you can see this is the stuff that we got out of ZBrush. Here's our curvature one. And kind of similar. Um, one thing I think I'm going to do really quick is I'm going to invert this, but instead of inverting the colors in here, I'm going to actually add a node because I want the black areas to fill kind of the negative spaces. So let's go ahead and right click, Utilities, Color Invert, and let's just plug that in here. And now you should see that the black is going on the inside. Um, so this is basically something you can just plug right into your Rust to be used as the same map that we brought from ZBrush. So let's just demonstrate that right now. I'm going to remove the original node that we had in here and I'm going to plug in the new one that we created. And now let's turn on our original metal shader. Now you can see that it's actually working, but I think I need to actually get rid of this color invert. So I'm just gonna delete that. And let's just plug this back in. Okay, now you can see that it's working. Little areas in here are getting darker. The metal is staying brighter. But to me, this isn't strong enough. So let's go in here and let's press C. So now we can see what's going on. I think you're just going to have to mentally think that the white spots are where the dirt is going to be filling and the black is where it's going to be metal. It's a little bit of an opposite way of thinking from the ZBrush map we extracted. So let's go in here. We're going to play with some of these different cutoff and radius settings. 
I'm just going to go really extreme with these. And you can see as you're turning up the radius, things get a little bit more blurry and fuzzy. Uh, and as we're playing with the cutoff, usually that will um, sharpen in between some things or do some spread of how far the mix is going to occur. So let's go ahead and take another quick look at how it's reacting on the main surface. And right away, you know, this is working pretty well. So if you didn't have UVs maps on this, you didn't want to take the time to extract all these different texture maps that we were doing, this is a really quick way to get a decent result on your model. Me, sometimes I don't like the final look I get from the procedural feel. That's why I like to be able to mix in between these two different um, versions of the asset. So one thing I'm going to do right now is I want to be able to compare between a couple different renders of this. So I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to go back to our cameras. I'm going to click that cam lock. As you guys remember, this is the one that we are not moving at all. I'm actually going to unlock this a second and zoom out just a bit since this is going off the corner of the frame. I'm going to lock that again. And I'm going to pause the video here in a minute to allow this to render really cleanly. And then I'm going to allow our, I'm going to enable our other map from ZBrush and get a nice render out of that so I can save those off. And now I'm going to switch back to our original uh, map that we did from ZBrush. So let's just enable that. Okay, so now we have two nice renders out of there, and um, I'm going to show you what I did behind the scenes in Photoshop. I really quickly just put those together so you could compare them. So right now you can see the one that we extracted from ZBrush, and then this is the one that I did that was from uh, Keyshot with the curvature. So the Keyshot one, a little bit sloppier, but it still gets the job done. Here's the uh, one from... Uh, this is the one from uh, ZBrush, this is the one from Keyshot. Also, I allowed the one from uh, the ZBrush map to render a little bit longer. So there's one final thing I'm going to do. Let's say that you wanted to end up combining these two uh, so that you get something that's more like this and you wanted to do that within Keyshot. Uh, that's pretty easy to do too. So what I'm going to do is pull this over a little bit. And in here, uh, we need to add another color composite node like you see up here. So let's do that again. Utilities, color composite. We're going to pull that down. Uh, the color invert over here. Let's remove this one from the connection of the opacity. We're going to plug in the color composite to the opacity. Let's take the color invert. Let's put it into the source alpha. This will be kind of like our, our base. You can see that it's inverting kind of strangely here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this little invert node, put this into the source. Now we have the original setting that is from the ZBrush map as expected. And then we're going to take the curvature map and we're going to plug it into the source up here uh, above the source alpha, which is where the texture map is in. And then now you can see that these two are combining together to do a render. So once again, I'm going to kind of let that render in the background and then we will compare them again in Photoshop to see how they all look together. Okay, so now I feel like this combo render is complete, and in the background I put them together in Photoshop, so I'm going to show you guys the comparison. So this is with uh, the ZBrush map as well as the curvature combined together with that color composite node. These, here is our ZBrush only image, and here is the curvature image only. So you can see really quickly you can get a variety of different looks from this. Um, I do find myself a lot of times combining both of these together like you see here. And if I'm doing like a still image like this, a lot of times I will actually end up combining between the two of these. Like if I feel like this is too strong and this one's almost perfect, I just come through here in Photoshop and then, you know, I'll adjust the settings so you can uh, blend between the opacities and find one that you like. But um, yeah, that's the uh, basics of it. And I want to share that with you guys because it's nice to know all the different ways that you can mix between these. So that being said, I think that our material is now completed for the um, 
material amulet. So let's go ahead and save that one more time. I'm just going to close this, go back to our material section, right click this, save to library, amulet demo. Okay, yes, we want to overwrite this. So it's just pausing as it saves. And then I'm going to do one more save for our key shop file. And this time I'm going to call it C. We're going to save this. Camera lock is an unsaved state. Would you like to save the current camera position? Uh, let's say yes. And I believe it's telling me this because you can actually save off your different cameras. But um, yeah, I think we're good to go right now. So next thing that we're going to do in the following chapter will be to start working on our gemstone and working on the shader for that. This tutorial and its downloadable content is available now on my QBrush, Gumroad, and Steam stores, which are linked in the description below. Watch the following video to see what is included with your purchase. If you purchase this tutorial, here is a preview of all the bonus content you will receive. Firstly, in ZBrush, I've included three different versions of the amulet. One, my final sculpted version with all the ornamentational details and destruction. Two, just the sculptural details like ornamentation. Three, a version without anything so you could follow along and create your own during the process. Secondly, you will receive the final key shot file demonstrated here, which contains all of the texture maps, lighting, and everything that is shown during the tutorial. The thing that I find really useful about this is having access to the material graph and seeing the complex custom materials that are created during the tutorial. This will really help you with understanding how to create your own complex materials in Keyshot. Next, you will receive all of the final PSD files showcased throughout the tutorial, including this gold painted Mount Fuji design with all of my different layering processes, as well as the custom crest base that is used later for sculpting in ZBrush based off of masks. Also, you'll get all of the final texture maps that are showcased during the tutorial, such as these, which are all tileable. You will also receive all of the original videos in downloaded format at their full high definition resolution. Also, I have included dozens of high quality personal art images, such as my Dark Souls 3 High Lord of Walnor fan art, which inspired me to create the Amulet tutorial to showcase the techniques I learned and developed during the process. Whether you purchase this tutorial or follow along for free on Facebook or YouTube, thank you for your continued support, and I cannot wait to see the epic amulets you create soon.